Hello, I'm Sergei, and this is a tutorial how to practically use your individual HRTF to listen to any music, videos or other content on a PC. In this video we will set up the most feature-rich solution, which can directly use any HRTF in SOFA format, has convenient extra features and optionally can use head tracking. The HRTF itself can be generated by Mesh to HRTF simulation, where a complete video tutorial course is available right now, or an HRTF file can be acquired by various other methods, including by picking the best sounding one from a public HRTF database. To get the latest download links and see any updates since the video was recorded, please open the link to the written tutorial. So we start by downloading the three programs which we're gonna need Voice Meter Banana, Sparta Plugins, and VST Host. Go to the Voice Meter Banana website and download the setup. We go to the Sparta plugins and download the latest release. In this case I'm interested in Windows 64 version. It comes in an installer. And for VST host, we are looking for VST host x64 zip. That's good enough. Go to our downloads and start installing. Voice meter install. Installation successful, you must reboot your system. Notice that when you install voice meter, it immediately sets itself as a default playback device, and because it's not yet configured, you probably have lost all sound on your computer. Then we install the Sparta plugins. We go run anyway, agree, default location is good, install, close. VST host, we unzip it. And you can actually run it away from here, but I will move it to a permanent location. So I go cut and put it onto the program files. Paste. Continue. Now I'm going to make a shortcut by sending to desktop. Now, as voice meter said, we need to restart the computer. And I will come back to a video as soon as I do that. And we are back after restarting the computer. And we will be following instructions forward. So after we install the software, next thing is to configure virtual sound card, which is voice meter. Here's our voice meter and the first thing after it starts the engine will be that it shows that we don't have any output device. So we click on A1 and select our primary audio device you want to use. In my case it's the Apple USB-C adapter on VDM. Right now I should have the sound back and working. You can see that there's a lot of controls here, but actually we will not use any of these. So I'm going to mute them. I'm not going to use this one either. And I'm not going to use these extras as well. So all we're going to use is one channel of a virtual I.O. and one output channel, which is routed to A1, which is our actual headphone connection. So, then we go into the menu, as the tutorial says, and here we want to set Run on Windows Startup. We want to set Limit Remote Gain to zero, which means that when we're going to remotely adjust these faders, it will not allow to go into positive numbers. And that's another important feature of this program, that it can do shortcut hooking. And you can hook to your normal volume keys, or whichever volume controls you use on the computer, volume control for the first channel. And look, as I'm adjusting volume, I'm now adjusting the fader of this voice meter channel. 
this is very convenient because the normal volume control will no longer work if you are using virtual audio card. After this, we can go to the system settings, which look like this. And here, sampling rate right now is 48,000 Hz, which is already good. In this example, I was setting everything to 44.1 kHz, but that is just one of the two options. And if you are going to be using HESUV at some point, you might want to stick with 48,000 because that's the convention used in HESUV. The important part here is to activate the patch insert virtual ASIO. And to do that, you click on all of these eight channels. Actually, the text here is not entirely correct, but there are eight channels we're going to route to the ASIO and back. So we will not do optimization of the buffers right now, but that is something you need to come back to when you are ready with the basic functionality. You can read about the buffer times and that they have to be in multiples of 128 for Sparta plugins to work, but it really is as simple as reducing the value to something which still works for you. And if you are using VDM here, you are also caring only about VDM buffer time. So I close this and we are done in voice meter, but we have to check the actual sound settings in Windows. So we go to the volume icon, press on sounds, playback. The default device should be voice meter input. And the important part is you press on configure and set it to 7.1 sound. Then you go next, 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 finish. In properties, we do not want any spatial sounds. We do want 48,000 Hertz if that's what you chose. And 24 bit is good. Less than 24 bit is not good. The rest should be fine. And then you go to your actual sound device, which you are listening through. Notice my dongle, which is selected in uh, voice meter, is no longer selected in Windows, but you can still go to properties. Make sure you do not have any spatial processing in Windows, set that to off, and that your format matches whatever voice meter is set to. In this case, it's already there. So we go OK and OK. Some extra things in voice meter which are good to know. There is equalizer in, or actually tone controls for treble, mids, and bass here. Double click to reset. Something which is convenient. And then there is a very advanced EQ which you access by right clicking here. It's not perfect, but it's a quite sophisticated uh, PEQ which you can play with and uh, even have a couple of sets of settings which you can enable, disable, and so on. That's it for the main voice meter setup. So we can go down to the VST host. And uh, VST host, I have a shortcut here. So we are going to configure a performance, which is a preset effectively. We'll set it to reload and auto save plugin banks, which means we will not need to worry that things disappear after you close a program. And we will do save as, so that we can give it a new name, in this case, HRTF. Okay, and here we are. Now, the most important part is setting up the audio. So you go to wave settings and here you don't care about the input, you only care about output. And we want voice meter insert virtual ASIO. Here we have to put the correct sample rate and preferably 
buffer size which matches the settings in voice meter. Notice the input port is grayed out, it does nothing. You don't need to worry about it. OK. Let's take a look. Here are some recommendations in case of any issues. And now we're going to load the plugins which we want. So we go File, New Plugin, Program Files, Steinberg, VST Plugins. And here are all the Sparta plugins which we just installed. We want Binauralizer or Binauralizer Near Field or perhaps some other plugin which is equally good as Sparta Binauralizer. We get some questions about networks. I would say allow. And we get this box here, which is already nicely inserted. I will also load Sparta Multiconvolver as an example of one more VST plugin, but it could as well be another plugin not from Sparta. Now we will fix the connections by clicking on the chain symbol here and saying we do not want Sparta Binauralizer to send directly to output. Here we do want to connect to Sparta Binauralizer, but we do not want to connect to input. And we are good. So now our chain of events is from input. We go to Sparta Binauralizer, to Sparta Multiconvolver, and out. If we click on this icon, plugin edit, we get the actual Sparta Binauralizer GUI, and we can also do for Multiconvolver, but right now we will not use Multiconvolver, so I will actually set it to Bypass. So, we are actually ready with VST host itself, but we are going to configure the Binauralizer. And here are the important parts you need to have a correct config for the channels. The default one is the one we usually want. You can read up when the other one is use useful as well. So now when it's downloaded, we can load it in by pressing import and selecting the config. As you load it in, you will find out that it sets number of inputs to eight. Each channel gets correct as the an elevation angle, and you will see something like this, where actually some channels are overlapping, so you will not see every digit because they are hidden underneath. I will quickly reload it to get it back to normal. There are also given presets here, but they are not entirely correct for use in Windows. So we're going to import the config back. Now everything looks good. Here is the place to load your sofa file. So you click and go to your HRIR file from mesh to HRTF or the sofa file you downloaded from another database. Notice that it says apply diffuse field EQ, which in this case I chose to keep but that's something you might not want to have, depending on your headphone equalization approach. Here you can see the HRTF points for different angles around your head. And in principle, it's already set. So let's do a short test. I'll open a file, which is a, a flock file. And if we look into voice meter, interestingly enough, nothing happens. So after some fault tracing, I noticed that the buffer which I set was too low. So after I set it to 512, I got the sound back. And that's just another warning that you should not lower the buffer values until you tested that things are working. Now we see that there is some signal coming into the system and it goes further. But we have another issue. As we see here, the first channels are not giving any input and then there are some extra channels there. 
which looks like we have ASIO channel mapping issue. So we go to the ASIO channel selection, uncheck load all inputs, and we only want input 4. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, because each of them had, contains two channels. And same on this side, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we only process in VSD host the 8 channels of the 7.1 sound. And we press OK. It's clearly working. And if we go to voice meter, we see the output of the binauralizer. We only see two channels here. Now, if I close the VST host, the sound continues working, and here we see all the channels of the 5.1 FLAC file. And actually, we see that the surround channels are not mapped correctly by the VLC player. That's one of the common issues why we have this part about the different presets for 7.1, 5.1 in case the software is not correctly mapping the channels and you do care about these details. So to demonstrate how flexible this is, we can just double click on VST host while sound is playing and things just start working with the Sparta binauralizer in the chain. It's that simple, that stable. And then finally, there is also enable rotation part for head tracking. So if we go back to the tutorial, the very last thing is head tracking. And I happen to have Supperware head tracker here. So just to show that it can be quite simple, we'll go to support page, download the bridgehead software, and literally install it. Of course, what I'm doing right now is because I already have this head tracker connected via USB to a computer. So you will not magically get head tracking working by installing this program. But we will skip the upgrade. We go to the settings and in profile select Sparta. And as I click select, you can see that it started receiving data. And if I click on enable rotation, now the sound actually follows the head rotations. So if you have correct software and correct head tracker, it is that simple and that fast. And again, everything is very robust. As you saw, I literally just installed it and Sparta Binauralizer picked up the signal and immediately started working. You can disable at any point or reset the position of the head tracker when needed. So when things are already working, you should start reducing the buffer times. This one is one of the major ones. And also you can go into the system settings and try to experiment lowering these values. Sometimes if you are pushing it too much, you would need to restart the system to see that all the settings have applied and double check that it's working. It can be a little bit messy to set up if you are pushing for the lowest latency possible. One more troubleshooting tip. If you increase the volume to a max, but it's still quiet, most likely is because the underlying hardware is set to a low volume. Therefore, when you set things up, especially the first time, make sure that the original sound card, which in my case is headphones, is actually set all the way to 100%. Then don't blow up your ears by lowering this fader. If you do this adjustment, you are most likely going to put yourself back onto the headphones. So change it back after making the adjustment to voice meter input and you are good to go. So in summary, this setup is tested to work very well and stable over time. Yes, the latency could be lower, but it works very well in practice and the convenience can be worth some performance drawbacks. There are more advanced steps for setting things up, 
like additional processing for the HRTFs or headphone equalization, which you can find on the wiki as it's being added. I hope this proves that individual HRTFs are not only readily available, but also practically usable right now. Finally, if you find the mentioned voice meter and VST host software useful, please donate to their respective developers. Have a great day!